Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kogels Nation. My name is Secret Agent Deeks and Kogels. I'm the founder and the director of the Kogels Industry Spy Network and the Kogels Nation. So, you want to play OSU Stable on Linux. And you want to play OSU Standard with OSU Stable. I am the guy that can demonstrate how you can go about this today. First off, we're going to hit Control, Alt, and T. Now, I have to cheat a little bit. Let me explain. I will go into my OSU files. I have this OSU build thing here. I have essentially made this little thing, and it's going to be based upon the method in 2021 shown off by How to Linux, who goes by the name Your Sandwich on the OSU. And basically, what we are doing is we are going to be making a wine prefix. So I'm going to show it off here. It's going to be wine prefix in all caps with uh, wherever you want to place your wine prefix. I would personally recommend placing your wine prefix inside of your home directory, which is what the tilde is for. Next is going to be the wine arch or the wine architecture. You'll be doing Win32, which means you'll be doing Windows 32 bit. You'll be using Wine Tricks, which is one of two requirements this time around, and obviously OSU Standard. You'll be getting .NET 4.0, the Microsoft Core fonts, some of the Asian fonts, including the fake Chinese, Japanese, and Korean fonts, so basically the fake Han uh, fonts. You'll get Font Fix, which is another setting. You'll do a Font Smooth. You'll be changing the sound engine to also, though you may end up getting 25 milliseconds of latency. And then you'll be setting your Windows version to Windows 7 32-bit. Now, for the most part, it seems to be doing okay. And just as a forewarning, I couldn't get everything in a different wine prefix. So essentially, I have to use a VPN in order to do this. Not sponsored, but I am using Proton VPN in order to get all the files needed because of some firewall things, but I'm not gonna get into that today. Anyway, we're going to install the .NET framework. This is .NET 4.0, and we do not want to use Mono. Mono will actually crash apps that will depend on the .NET framework. This is .NET framework 4.0. But Neeks and Doi, you may be asking, why are you having us make a 32-bit prefix when you can play the game 64-bit? I've never really thought about doing a 64-bit prefix. I haven't even tried. You could if you want, but it may end up resulting in crashes. So I do 32-bit prefixes just to avoid any type of crashing. All right, so now installation is complete for .NET. Now we will be grabbing all of the different uh, fonts. I'm going to go from the core fonts. And again, these are 32-bit. We are doing a 32-bit wine prefix within the Toho video, link in the description on the top right-hand corner of your screen right now. We did a 64-bit wine prefix. That is for when we installed Toho Hizo Tensok on Linux. And that was like a while ago. I don't even recall when the video was posted, but it was definitely posted on Thursday. By the way, you may want to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we post every week, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Thursdays. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time. So I will be right back once this finishes. Now that your wine prefix is made, you will want to do a quick wine prefix equals tilde forward slash and then dot wine demo. Actually, in my case, I will be using wine dash osu, but you will be doing whatever wine prefix you made. And then we'll do a quick wine cfg. We want to ensure there are a couple of settings that are correct. Under the Applications tab and your settings here, you'll want to see that Windows 7 is selected. And this is Windows 7 32-bit. If this were a 64-bit prefix, 
it would go all the way down to, I think, Windows XP or Windows Vista. But you want to keep this at Windows 7. The libraries are fine, everything else. I have GDI Plus as well. I do have the GDI Plus library. Uh, you could get that if you want. You could add that as a GDI Plus, like so, on the bottom of your screen. But otherwise, we'll move on. Desktop integration, everything here is fine. Uh, under staging, though, I am going to disable CSMT for better graphic performance. You probably will not want that. So make sure Windows 7 is the correct uh, operating system. And under staging, make sure CSMT is disabled. It is depreciated. And I think while I'm at it, I'm also going to enable VAPI as a backend. Nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to enable uh, the VAPI. So that's pretty much almost everything you need. Now we're going to do a quick after I clear this, we're going to do a quick sudo nano, and then we'll head to our Etsy security. And then we'll do limits.conf. We will be editing our limits.conf file, which is our monolithic configuration file. I will enter in my password. We're going to go down to the end of the file where um, you will place at your username and you'll set the nice level to negative 20. And then you'll set your RT prio, which is your real time priority to 99. Your nice level is actually up here, which happens to be nice priority allowed to raise the values. And of course, real time scheduling. These two values are actually required in order to get OSU working properly. And as long as you happen to have um, a few of these things, I mean, I didn't really make any changes, but I did save them, so I don't really need to do much. But you definitely want to check that just in case. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a touch and then OSU stable, or however you want this, I'm going to get in there. And then we'll nano it. And then we're going to make a little bash script. So we're going to do bin sh, just like every bash script should start. And then we're going to do the following. Y prefix equals that. Same thing. I will do y osu but you can do the same thing with whatever. And then we'll do staging underscore audio underscore duration. And we're going to start with 10,000. Basically, this particular flag will make it to where you can decrease a little bit of latency, but not too much of a big deal. So that's why I have that there. I was able to set it to 5,000 and I think I got it almost close to like zero milliseconds of latency. That's because I use Linux and not Windows, which is bloated like crazy and has like 70 milliseconds. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, we'll do a quick line and then wherever OS happens to be, And this is how you would go about it, right? That isn't really a big deal. Though I am going to exit this. And I think it's under user, local, and then bin. For me. Yeah, that looks to be correct. So, Obviously, we still have that OSU bin file there. But Nixendoig, you may be asking, how are you able to move your OSU stable binary into user local bin? That's actually pretty easy to do. It's going to be a ch mod plus x and an OSU stable. You would hit enter. 
and then you would do a quick sudo cp and then if I can actually do this right, I cannot type apparently. This is, I think, how you would go about moving it. At least that's what I did and it actually has worked properly for me. And that is how you can get OSU stable working as per the usual. I'm actually going to clear that. So basically make that an executable using the chmod plus x command, and then you need to copy it or rather move it over to your user, local, and bin directory, and then run a quick osu stable or however you have it named, you will be able to run osu with the settings that you have already pre-configured in your bash script. Yes, you've just made a bash script, even though it is a little insane. But with this method that I use, I can get roughly 15 milliseconds of delay without any issues. Editor Nixendoig here. It looks like while I was editing this video, I had found out that I had actually forgotten to give you guys a guide on how to even get this thing onto Lutris. But basically, all you have to do, you have to hit the plus button, you have to add the locally installed game. In this case, it'll be Osu Stable, if I can get it right. You would select Linux as this is a native Linux script then you would find wherever your user, that's var, user, local, and then bin, and then you would actually select it, and you can do whatever you want. But you will usually save the options afterwards. But otherwise, it's pretty simple to do. Since you have to run this as Linux, it will already run the wine for you, and you'll even be able to use game mode as well, if you have the game mode service installed. But that's going to be it for today's video. If you like this video and want to see more like this in the future, you can do this one of five ways. You can hit the like button to show your support to the Koyos Nation, hit the subscribe button to become a member of the Koyos Nation, hit the bell icon to be notified when new episodes arrive every Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can also... Comment on all of our videos. All videos are open for comment. And last but not least, you can share this channel with your family and friends. That being said, I'm out of time for today's video. Thank you and good night.